Hello and welcome to <coughs> Chapter Five, Example Set Two, CSE Two Five Nine. In this, uh, we will look at uh, rules of natural deduction in model logic. So we'll just try to see one example in this. Uh, but before we jump into the examples, uh, a quick review of the rules. So, given uh, an agent K. If you are able to deduct phi, then we can say k uh, satisfies phi. So that's the rule of uh, uh, introduction. And the rule of elimination is given that an agent ki uh, uh, knows phi, then we can justify phi given ki, uh, assuming ki. Recall that uh, uh, given k1 to agents k1 to k m in a group g then e of g of phi implies all ki of phi for all uh, for i equal to 1 to n for i equal to 1 to n. That is, uh, we say e of g knows phi if every agent in the group g knows phi. So that's e of g. So if you are assume e of g and you can conclude this uh, formula phi, then e of g knows phi. That is the introduction uh, rule for e of g. Similarly, you have the elimination rule for e of g. and uh, C of G is um, C of G is E of G of phi and uh, E of G of E of G of phi and so on. That is every uh, group knows that uh, every uh, agent knows phi and every other agent knows that every other agent knows phi and so on and so forth. Uh, so these are the rules of introduction and elimination of uh, C of G. Along with this, we have the rules of elimination and introduction for uh, uh, K E and uh, C K. That is, if every for each I, these come directly from the definition of uh, E and K and C. Uh, that's it. And uh, the uh, if there is an agent that knows phi, an arbitrary agent, then we can say. Uh, phi is true. This is the T rule uh, of um, uh, for an agent uh, K. We also have the rule number four and rule number five. That is something like if uh, CG over phi holds, then CG CG over phi holds. And if not of CG over phi holds, then CG not of CG over phi holds. Uh, just like the rules of K for uh, uh, K4 and K5, which is if there is an agent that knows phi, then the agent knows that it knows phi and if an agent does not know phi then an agent knows that it does not know phi so those are the rule 4 and rule 5 so these are some of the rules that are given for more details on these rules go through the videos provided in your course and the course book uh, section 5.4 and 5.5 section 5.4 uh, is for the kt rules and for uh, uh, n agents it is uh, provided in section 5.5 so now let's use the rules of KT45 uh, with N agents, KT45 with N agents to uh, do one example. So here we are saying that, you know, using the natural deduction rules of KT45 power N, that is we have N agents, prove the validity of this, that if, if agent, uh, an arbitrary agent knows P and Q, then the arbitrary agents know P and the arbitrary agent knows Q. These two are equivalent formulas. That is, we need to prove both sides of this uh, equation. So let me just... So first let me consider you know, that Ki, P and Ki, Q is valid. So this is my premise. Then I assume a ki
and I can say KIP from and elimination one from one. Then I can say P from KIT of three. Similarly, I can say KIQ from elimination rule two and of conjunction and from one and then I can say Q from KIT of 5. So these two rules are uh, from uh, propositional logic, uh, the AND rules, I'm using the same ones, and these two rules are the KT rules that we just saw uh, just previously. So now I have P is valid and Q is valid, so I can say P and Q, this is the AND introduction rule, from 4 and 6. Now given this, we can conclude Ki of P and Q from the introductory rule of Ki going from line number 2, Ki introductory rule 2 to 7. So we have proved given the right hand side, we have got the left hand side. Now we have to prove the other way around. It's very similar steps. It's only that it is a little more longer and tedious comparatively. So let me go about doing it now for you. So we are given Ki of P and Q. So then I would say taking a Ki, say Ki P and Q, or I can say this is a K1 here. So this is the Ki elimination rule of 1. Now this gives me P and Q. This is the Ki K1 T rule over 2. Now I can say P, this is uh, the AND elimination rule from 3. Now since I have a K1, which is arbitrary, I can conclude Ki of P, which is the Ki introductory rule from 2 to 4. Now again, taking another K2, which is arbitrary, I get K2, P and Q, Ki, Ki elimination rule from 1, we get P and Q, this is the Kit rule from 6, then I get Q, this is the and elimination rule 2 from 7, now, this gives me KIQ, this is the KI introductory rule using 6 8. So finally, I have from 5 and 9, I can say KIQ and KI, sorry, KIP and KIQ, this is the AND introductory rule using 5, 9. So from using the LHS, I have derived the RHS. So this shows that these two rules are equivalent. One thing which I would like to bring to your notice here is the boxes. Many times you have forgotten to put the boxes in your previous homeworks. Please don't forget that because whenever you are making an assumption, so you are taking a K1 or a K2 or a KI in this case, in either of the cases, you need to put a box and leaving the box out can be erroneous. Another thing that you need to remember is writing this numericals with a dash. It's not with a comma, it's with a dash. Whenever you're concluding from a box, a whole set of rules that you've used, you provide it as two dash four. That is, I'm using all the rules from two to four, which are given in this box. 
when I'm using any two rules, like over here, when I'm saying five and nine, that is I'm using this rule and this rule, then I say comma. Even if they are consecutive rules, if I'm using three rules, I use comma. So I can say rule five comma six if I'm using rule five and rule six. So this is the way we prove uh, rules of natural deduction. Uh, you can see more examples from chapter four, uh, chapter five, 5.4 and 5.5 and also go through the lecture videos provided to you uh, in the Canvas shell. Uh, thank you so much.